So the group has had its highest profit in 15 years, expecting revenues to increase once again. Credit provisions remaining stable. Let's hear from the CFO, James von Molka. For the year and the quarter, revenues were up 7%. I think the business performance underneath that was quite strong. Um, so our corporate bank was up 30% um, in, in, the, in the quarter, 23% in the year. Um, our private bank, bank 11% in the year. Uh, and even the investment bank was up 4% of the year. The fourth quarter was it tailed off a little bit for us in, in, in November and December, but still was a record quarter in our FIC business for a fourth quarter, 8.9 billion for the full year. We're, we're thrilled with that performance. Um, but as you say, it came a little bit short of, of analyst expectations and our guidance um, late in the year. Um, so let us look at, at the different divisions, because the investment, of course, is very important to, uh, to you. How did it start in the new year? Strongly. Um, we've had a, a good January. Um, you know, volatility has continued into 23. Um, in a sense, perhaps a surprise that the, that, that the market conditions that we saw uh, in 22, perhaps not quite as, as, as dramatic, but, but have, have persisted into, into 23. That gives us some some encouragement that our, our general view, which was that, that volatility and conditions in the macro businesses would, would taper off over time, but, but would be replaced, if you like, from a revenue perspective with increasing activity in micro areas like credit, M&A, equity, and also debt issuance. We see that still intact as a, as a thesis of what 23 will look like. Yeah, let's look a little bit ahead. Uh, 2023, um, last year was a very volatile year. Um, what's in store for this year, also in terms of M&A activity? Do you think there will be a resumption of that? We do. We do think it'll pick up. I mean, it's it's simply part of the cycle that 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 when there, the volatility, the uncertainty is very high. You know, the boardrooms are are cautious about taking decisions. Um, but as the path into the future becomes more clear, less volatility, you you see that corporate confidence come back. Um, and the reality is that, that there is an underlying sort of set of strategic trends to which corporates will, will want to react and take, take action, whether that's changes in the geopolitical environment, supply chains, obviously technology continuing to, to, to disrupt business models. So we see that, that underlying trend is absolutely there, and it's just a question of timing. What does it mean for your business? Are you also looking into buying back shares? Because clearly, I mean, the share price is always an issue and you have perhaps liquidity free to do so. Well, look, share buybacks is absolutely part of the toolkit that we, we intend to employ to distribute capital to our shareholders. Uh, in March of last year at our investor day, we talked about a total, re total capital return for the years 22 to 25 of 8 billion. And we're committed to that path. Today we announced a dividend of 30 cents a share, and that's entirely consistent with the path. On the share repurchases, given the uncertainty of the environment today that we see, also some regulatory changes that we'd like to see both the timing and the extent of, we're, we're holding back for now. We think that's the prudent action to take, but, but we intend to revisit that and, and again, are committed to the, to the overall path of 8 billion in respect of those years to 25. When are you planning to revisit that? I'd, I'd say the second half of this year. I think, that, again, the environment to us remains fragile. There's been, uh, I think, a much more optimistic start to the year and a, and a greater belief in a soft landing and that some of the, the, the uncertainties that the world has faced resolving themselves in, in, on an optimistic side of the, of, the, of the ledger. From our perspective, it's still a little bit fragile and, and therefore it, it's sensible to, to be cautious with capital until until we see that, um, you know, the, the, the clear path ahead. And as I say, resolve some, some, some regulatory inflation items. What makes you think that the outlook is fragile? What factors are you looking at? Well, if you think about the, the, the risks the world is facing, whether it's the, the path of inflation, the path of interest rates, the depth of the recession, wherever that, whatever that may be, geopolitical uncertainties, energy prices and supply, I mean, those are all relatively significant issues for the economy. Um, and, and while we've sort of, as I say, ended up in a more favorable scenario, at least for now, I think there's still uncertainties associated with, with, with all of those things. And the markets will obviously react to, to changes in, in the news and changes in the outlook.
Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.